Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. We're going to be talking about the FY24 Title I Summer Application Training. So we'll go through how to apply, uh, how the funds are used, and a lot of other details related to the grant. So we're the summer Title I team. We picked our summary pictures for today. Uh, very excited about this grant and the flexibility it provides. Um, we'll provide our contact email at the end. I'm Jess Karen and Rita Pillow will be speaking midway through. So some just general rules for today. We are recording, so you can put your questions in the chat and we'll save some time at the end for a Q&A uh, session. So. Um, you can come off mute and share your question or put them in the chat, whatever you prefer. The training will be recorded and we're going to put it up on our resources page under the Title I section. So some of the questions we'll be answering today. What is this grant? Uh, what are the parameters for the grant? How does it intersect with some other summer programming going on? Um, we'll go through how you apply, what the deadline is, what the processes for selecting SAUs for funding, some best practices, and again, we'll share our emails at the end if you have any questions. So what is the Title I Summer Grant? So this is an additional application. It's a funding opportunity to support summer programming for Title I students in the summer. The funding comes from some state set-aside funds, return Title I funds, and we repurpose them for this additional limited grant. Similar to the other ESEA funding pools, certain parameters must be met and there's rules um, to use the funds. So like with any Title I funding, you can only serve Title I students in a targeted assistance or school-wide program. There's some general allowability restrictions, which we've hyperlinked here and Rita will put in the chat. Um, that's just a general spending snapshot of some of those rules. And then there are some specific parameters specific to this application that we'll go over on the next slide. And as always, we're looking to make sure what you're putting in the application is reasonable, allowable, and necessary. So um, on the right are some of those basic parameters. We'll go through some of those first. Um, so the program must be no less than four weeks, no more than six weeks. It must be at least three days per week. Can't have more than two field trips. If there is a field trip, it has to be aligned to the instructional program. It, the program can't have less than four hours per day, no more than six, and at least three instructional hours. Title I, as you know, is about academic intervention. So that must be the focus of these funds. And that's why some of those parameters are in place. There are limitations in this funding, as we've been noting. So that's why we have that restriction of just two field trips. And these funds can be braided with other funds, such as the ARP funding pool, which we'll be talking more in depth in in another slide. So. We've gotten some questions about the ARP Summer Enrichment Grant and the Title I Summer Programming Grant. We want to just make clear that both of these grants can fund full summer programs. ARP is more generic about student learning recovery, and Title I is meant for Title I students and Title I schools only. You can complete both, but they must supplement each other. You can't be supplanting and paying for the same services with both grants. Um, and we also just want to note that the allowability rules are a little different for each grant. Title I uh, will follow the allowable uses for all Title I programming, and ARP has different restrictions. Um, if you have questions about what the ARP allowability is, those questions should go to Jackie Godbelt, and she is actually on this call as well. So we'll be here for questions at the end of this uh, presentation. Great. Oh. And that brings, oh, uh, Go for I will it, Rita. Take, you take it. <laughs> yep, I'll take a moment to, to just say um, that uh, those were, so we kind of just ran through, that was it really for major parameters. 
we're going to talk about how we apply. But before we do, I just wanted to mention we get a lot of questions about feeding kids in the summer. And that makes total sense. You want to make sure you're providing food while you are um, implementing enriching summer programming for your students. Again, to say that Title I really is not meant to pay for food and that there are USDA child nutrition programs that can and do operate during the summer. Um, the Summer Food Service Program and in limited circumstances, the National School Lunch Program, both are options and they make sure that students don't eat, um, at no, eat at no charge. And this is a source of funding that if you are running summer programs, you want to make sure that you're uh, feeding the students, work with your food set service director to get more details about what that looks like, because you really want to stick or oh, stay away from Title I's academic and academic support and improvement grant to pay for summer meals. Um, and so we want to be really clear about it um, and avoid maybe a back and forth or a confusion when applying for this grant. And so that does lead us to how do you apply? Um, now, hopefully we're getting used to grants for me a couple of years in. Um, this grant is also on grants for me under this fiscal year of 2024, um, because these funds right are in that fiscal year, even though they seem to be coming late in the year for the summer. Um, they will be titled Title I Summer Reallocation Grant. Uh, similar to other new grants that your district may have or applies for, you'll need a user access. You'll need a role for somebody in that uh, district. Uh, that role is called the LEA Title I Summer Reallocation Grant Application Director, just because, you know, why not a thousand words? Um, but you should, following all of it makes sense that you would be the director of this grant. And so you would have that role. Um, and your user access administrator, which you probably have two in your district because we check for that every year, can change the roles and add you. So um, there is a, uh, a user access guide linked here and we can put it in the chat for you if that's something you wanna make sure it gets done. And then application requirements, you're gonna see kind of five major sections of this application. It is much less, right? Uh, heady and kind of intense than um, ESCA consolidated, but it's still its own grant application with contact information that we ask for. Um, you're of course providing needs, goals, and outcomes. Much like any other ESCA grant funding, it is tied to your high needs of your students. Um, what are you hoping to achieve for them in the summer recovery months? What are your goals to see them succeed in the following year? Um, and then project description, right? What are you gonna to do to meet those goals and those needs? Um, and of course that project description will be looked at for allowability and for following the parameters outlined in this grant. Um, of course, we do ask also for a pre preliminary summer school schedule. This is more in line of sort of making sure that this program has been thought through, has been understood structurally and how it's going to happen. And we know things change and such, but we're hoping to see a, a, a skeleton of, of how that program is going to look. And a budget request. <laughs> and this of course is exactly what it sounds. Now that you've told us what you're doing and what you need, what do you need from us to pay for it? And I think uh, for this, you know, it's you, often we see salaries and benefits, they should be separated again similarly. Um, and the supplies that you might need or transportation needs for your Title I students. Um, the more details, usually the better, because if something is vague or maybe is in the gray area of allowability, we're more likely to return it to you with a requirement of additional edits um, versus a very uh, clearly outlined use of that budget. So when is this deadline? Our deadline is uh, Friday, March 29th at 5 p.m. Eastern. A submission to be on time means that the ESCA coordinator or the Title I director in that role has clicked on, I think it's draft completed, and it's moved to the business manager or fiscal LEA rep, off, LEA fiscal rep approved, and then it's moved to your LEA authorized rep or your superintendent. Because this is a summer grant that's functioning outside of everything, 
we really want to ensure that your leadership team is aware and has approved and signed off on your summer programming. How is your district selected for funding? Um, we really like to be transparent about how we select districts. We really hope that it's an obvious reason as to why you, why you may or may not receive funding. The past few years, we've been able to uh, fully fund, but if folks remember from last summer, I may have called your district and asked to under budget or to think through, I would say maybe, or asked if there was over budgeting happening. Um, and I will say in the past, about a quarter of funds are not used that are asked for. And I'm not saying, you know, to think through that and under budget yourself immediately, but I will say that that is a practice that I have seen, um, that usually districts do not spend everything that they ask for. And that's not true for everyone, but it was true a lot this last summer. Um, and so what happens is if you do ask for more than you need and we do run out of funding, there will be districts who don't receive anything. And that's why I was trying really hard last year to make sure districts got what they needed. Um, so we have a priority ranking, those with more than those with tier three schools, those with like less ESEA funding and carryover with a lower risk status, and then poverty level, sort of higher poverty level for Title I will also be prioritized. So I just want to be clear on that. And I think, um, Jess, were you able to share those reallocation procedures in the chat? If not, I think it may be helpful to do that. Um, and just to give everybody, and it is online on our resources page, and we will um, share those with you. Um, but it's just, I think, an important thing to note that if we ever do not have enough funding for all applicants, there will be districts who are not awarded funds, which is hard to swallow. Um, so best practices and reminders. We, a couple of summers ago, maybe FY22, I believe, we did post examples from the field, all of uh, the districts that uh, participated in Title I Summer Reallocated actually ended up telling me what self-reporting sort of what worked for their students. Um, I have highlighted some of those here, but um, we do have on our website that kind of outlines what all of you have told us works for your kids. Um, and I think it might be worth looking at if you're a district that says, you know, we've been doing reading intervention really well, or We've been doing this really well, but actually our family engagement could use a little bit of work in the summer. Maybe we'll take a look at what other districts have done. Maybe it's a newsletter. Um, maybe it's something in the beginning and at the end. Um, so just something to think about because I always, you know, it's hard. We're constantly putting out fires. Um, can we ever take a moment to kind of see what others have done and, and maybe shift our gears? So there's just that resource to maybe help um, help folks think through what may have worked and. and in their neighbors' um, backyards. And that is really it for our training. Uh, happily, this is not a huge, huge grant um, in terms of like size and need of filling it out, but you do have to understand the requirements. You do have to understand the parameters and the limited funding and what that means. So I think right now we'll stop recording and we can stop sharing our screen. Um, I know folks have come in late and may have questions. We're happy to answer those. Um,